Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my WordPress theme tutorial. Now we're getting into the meat of how to create themes. In this part of the tutorial, I'm going to actually show you how to create the HTML that goes into this guy right here, which is going to become a theme. I know it's not the most beautiful thing on earth, but if you understand the concepts of how this goes together, you'll be able to create almost anything. And I created this basic look in Photoshop that was extremely easy to do if you understand Photoshop in any way. So that's why I'm not gonna show you how to actually draw that in Photoshop. And here on the left side of your screen, you can see all of the code that is needed to create an XHTML strict validated file. And all of the code is available in a link in the underbar if you want to get it, and it's free, of course. So there's all that information. No reason to type that out because I might mess something up and then I'm going to jump right into this and if you don't know HTML or CSS I provide a link to tutorials on that on the screen because you have to understand them okay so I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to define my title and again this is going to be all of the HTML that's required in the next part of this tutorial I'm going to go into all the CSS then we're going to have a completely working web page and then I'm going to convert that into a theme you have to do this piece by piece well I know I'm going to have a style sheet so I'm going to link out to it and this is how you do it just point towards where it's located and all themes have a file called style.css and then I'm going to copy this because I need to link to a couple other style sheets. One of those style sheets is going to be specific to my home page and then the other one is going to be in my includes directory or folder and it's going to be called menu. It's going to be specific to the menu system and I'm going to link to an external JavaScript file and as we move through this I'm going to have to make some changes to the theme to make everything work. If you saw the previous parts of this tutorial you understand the basics of how WordPress pulls information using PHP. Alright so there's the JavaScript code that I need to link to and now I can close off the head part of my HTML and get into the body area. And I know I want to wrap everything inside of a div. So that all of this is gonna be wrapped in one div. So I gotta create one and I am gonna call it page wrapper. Why? Because that's what I always call it, no other reason. And then I need to create the header section, which is this part up here. So I'm gonna go div ID because there's only gonna be one header as if there's only going to be one page wrapper. That's why I'm using IDs instead of classes. Later on, I'll use classes whenever there's gonna be multiple versions of whatever there is on the screen. And then I know I'm going to have to link to an image, which is the logo. So I'm gonna have an images folder and the logo became logo two. And then I have to use my alt text and I'm gonna give it a width equal to 60 pixels and a height equal to 60 pixels. I know technically I should do all styling in the CSS code, but this does validate doing this so I'm doing it that way and then I have my blog title right here key care so what am I going to do for that since it's going to be the biggest text on the screen I'm going to have it be an h1 tag and I'm going to give it an ID equal to blog title and key care close off that h1 tag and I give everything an ID let's scroll up here a little bit and then I'm going to create a paragraph tag and it's going to contain the blog slogan and I don't know if I said it or not, but there's a link to all of this code in the underbar. And I want to put an and sign, but if you want this to be HTML strict, you have to put this little code in here. So that's an and sign. And then close that off. And then close off the div for the header section. So there's your header section. All of this is done right here. That's all that's needed to be done. Of course, close off the div. And then I'm going to create another div for my menu system, which I'm going to get back to here in a second. And I'm just going to call it menu. And then I'm going to close off that div. Like I said, get back to it in a second. But then what do we have after the menu? We have this featured banner. So I'm going to come in here, create another div. Everything is just boxes in HTML and CSS. Featured banner. This is an image. Source is equal to images. And I'm going to call it nurse banner. Give it a height equal to 250 pixels, width equal to 1,000. And this whole entire page is 1,000 in width. And give it an ID equal to featured image. So that I'll be able to change it in the future if I decide to change it. And then I'm done with that. So I can close off that div. And then what do I have? Well, you might actually think I'd create the content section next, but that is not the way it goes. If you want to float things right using CSS code, you have to create them before you create whatever you're going to have over here. So I have to actually create the two sidebars before I create the content section. No big deal. Create a new div. Give it an ID. First side bar. And then inside of there, I'm going to have all these information here. So I'm going to create another div. Class is equal to sidebar widgets because that's what they're called inside of WordPress, widgets. All right, then I'm going to create another div. 
And this is going to be a class this time, just like this, because there's going to be multiple versions of this that I'm going to target with CSS code. So since it's not going to be the only one, the only sidebar widget, or the only sidebar title, it has to be called a class. And I'm going to make this an H4 tag, title in sidebar, just like it says there. And then I'm going to close off this div. And then next up, paragraph, class, is equal to sidebar excerpt. Yeah, like that, a h reference, and I'm gonna leave this empty for now, and I'm gonna call this click for more for now, and then close that guy off. All right, so then if I wanna create three of them like I have here on the screen, I'm just gonna copy this and paste those in there. And then I'm gonna close off that div. And then I'm gonna close off the sidebar div all together. So there's the whole sidebar right there. First sidebar, this is closing that off. See how easy it is to read this whenever you indent everything? And then this div is closing that div off. So there's that sidebar. Well, I actually wanna create two sidebars, so what do I do? Well, I'm just gonna copy and paste them. Copy, doink, and then I'm just gonna come in here and go second sidebar. And then since everything else is gonna be exactly the same, I'm just gonna leave it like that. So I have first sidebar there, and then I have second sidebar there. So everything else is the same. And now since I have that out of the way, I can get into the main content area here. Scroll up. Since it is the main content, I'm gonna give it a div. ID is equal to main content. And then what do I have there? Intro title, which is gonna be here. And then this is gonna be a mes message from the owner. And then this is gonna be some posts that I pull in. I'm gonna call this intro title. And again, it's this guy right here. And since it's second biggest thing on the screen, I'm gonna give it an H2 tag. And I'm gonna say, welcome to my website. H2, close the div. And then I have this lipsum text that's right here. So I'm gonna create a paragraph, give it an ID, intro, paragraph. And then I need some lipsum code to throw into that. I'm just gonna jump over here and grab some. Got it? And I'm gonna paste that in there just for now. And then I need to close off the paragraph. And then I have to create all the different titles and images and all this content that's gonna be coming from the post. How I'm gonna do that is I'm actually going to create an unordered list. Post list is equal to. Yeah, I'm going to create a list item. You do this a lot with WordPress themes. Then I'm going to need a title, class, post, title, post, title goes here. And then I have to create a paragraph, class is equal to post, excerpt. And then I need the lorem ipsum, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm going to throw a break statement in here at the end of that. Might get rid of that later on. And then I need a link, H reference is equal to, and then I'm just going to put nothing in there for now. Class is equal to, and I'm just going to call this click for more. Supposing that I want all my links to act the same, click for more. And then I'm going to close off the paragraph tag. And if you're watching very closely, you probably are wondering why I didn't put the image in there first. And the reason why it has a certain amount to do with how my CSS code is going to work out. And I'm just going to use the logo currently right here. What I'm going to do is with CSS, I'm going to move this over the excerpt and then I'm going to move the image up. And to be able to do that, you have to have the image actually show up after the excerpt. You're going to see it in the next tutorial. And then the alt text is key logo and I'm gonna give it a width equal to 60 pixels and a height equal to 60 pixels and I'm gonna give it a class equal to post image these are key holders to a certain extent so they will change and then since this is a list item I have to actually come in here close off that list item and then I'm also gonna come in here close off the unordered list right like that and then I'm gonna jump up here to this guy right here and I'm gonna copy it and paste that in there. So now I got two of those versions in there, so that's good. And now I have to create my footer section, which is this guy right down here. And I'm gonna give it an ID of, guess what, footer. Create another div, and I'm gonna give it an ID of copyright. And then to create the copyright symbol that's down here, I have to go like this, copy. 2011, and I'm just gonna type in my theme since that's what I have over there. But of course this is gonna change as well. And then I gotta close off that div, right like that. Now the only thing left to do is to get all the menu code. And in a previous tutorial, I showed you how to create a menu bar system. So I'm actually providing a link to that in this part of the tutorial. You can go check that out. There's no point in me doing that tutorial over again. But if I jump over here, here is a link to that menu bar system that I had created previously. Now, of course, I'm not going to need this because I already have a div. So I'm going to select this and I'm going to scroll down to the bottom and highlight this whole entire table system. Copy that 
and then jump back into my index.php file and I'm just going to paste all that code directly inside of here except I'm going to take out this comment right like that and then take this out again these are just placeholders all this information in this menu is going to be 100% dynamic by the time we're done with that and just to see what this guy looks like I'm going to file save him and then open up a browser and just to check it out I have the validator the HTML validator here as you can see right here on your screen if you go to this place you can actually paste your code directly inside of here and then hit check and it'll tell you if it validates or not yes it did validate as you can see right here there's one warning and the warning that has to do with character types which get messed up whenever you use this tool so this is 100% validated as you can see passed but to show you how ugly it is in this current format I'm gonna load it up here on the screen and you can see this is what it looks like on the screen right now kind of ugly but in the next part of the tutorial I'm going to show you how to do all of the CSS code to make this all pretty and nice so that it looks exactly like what you see here on the screen if you have any questions or comments leave them in the comment section below otherwise till next time